Okay, welcome everybody. My name is Simone Conceição and I'm the facilitator of the web forum today. Um, well, I'm also the one of the co-editors for the Companion Volume 2, uh, which focuses on teaching and learning. And today the presentation is about um, Article 26, Chapter 26, um, and it's called From Case-Based Learning to Interactive Case Scenarios, a Digital Hybrid. So this um, uh, presentation will go a little deeper into the ideas from the article. And uh, so to, have, to, to give you an idea, and we'll try to have a lot of discussion with you. So the, the presenter is Les Howells, my colleague Les Howells. And he's an emeritus faculty associate and director of distance education professional development with the University of Wisconsin Madison. So um, we are going to have uh, three segments for this presentation, and in between we are going to do some discussion. You know, this is about interactivity, so we would like to have discussion here too. And the three segments will be about what when and how to use interactive case scenarios. I will pass it to um, Les if he wants to explain how the discussion will work and then we'll okay. get started on the different segments. Les. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Simone. Um, as Simone said, there are going to be three segments to this session today. And I'm going to start off by explaining some of these aspects of interactive case scenarios. And then we're gonna follow that up with Simone, uh, as she mentioned, uh, moderating a discussion. Now, here's a couple suggestions for the participants here today. Uh, please go ahead and feel free to submit all your questions and comments using the Zoom chat utility. And there may be instances where you really wanna expand upon uh, what was said or what I explained and you want to add to it and chat is just not effective. So just let Simone know that you'd like to take the stage with an audio or video uh, uh, format and she'll put you on live so you can, you can talk verbally. From his place for three days. Okay. So I'm hearing a little audio in the background there, but we're going to move ahead. So part one is that let's take a look at the pedagogical rationale for scenario-based learning. And in the article, I didn't really have the space or I didn't really get into explaining the attributes of it. So I'm actually going to show you some examples so you get a better feel and sense of what interactive case scenarios are. Just a little background, though. Um, when I worked, uh, worked at the uh, Department or Division of Information Technology uh, at the University of Wisconsin as a senior consultant and project manager for several years, and I became involved, heavily involved, with case scenario-based uh, learning activities. It was part of the games and simulations uh, program, which I was also a part of and a project manager. And we found that games and simulation design was pretty much beyond the, the scope and ability and resources of many faculty and instructional staff because of the, the intensive time and resource requirements to develop an interactive game or simulation. But we found that interactive case scenarios were in the ballpark, uh, that, that faculty, uh, instructors, and designers could develop these rather quickly. Uh, with a lot less uh, uh, resources and time required for games. So it's an alternative in a way. In some ways we refer to it as, you know, the poor man's simulation. So we can create impact uh, similar to a simulation or even a, a simulation game, but with a lot less uh, uh, involvement in resources and, and time. Uh, now this is a very complex graphic, but what we, the whole basis of scenario-based learning is in contextualization. And I'm going to simplify this graphic a little bit for you and just focus where we need to. 
uh, if we look at interactive case scenarios, where we look at this contextualization spectrum, case, interactive case scenarios fall right about in the middle. And if you look at this, notice on the far left, we have academic contextualization, which is pretty much decontextualized content, abstractions through lectures, analogies that are made. And then as you move up, you notice uh, you know, the case study falls uh, as, as a form of secondary contextualization. And then uh, storyline role play. And then we hind positioning interactive case scenarios about right in the middle uh, as a curricular approach. Uh, so keep that in mind that you know, as you move up the spectrum, you get into more hands-on, more real in the world uh, type learning activities. But case scenarios are done <laughs> basically virtually on the computer. And they're, they're trying to get as much context, the feel and sense of context into the learning experience as possible without having to take you into the real world, similar to a simulation. Now, we're all familiar with case studies. Let's just, just take a very quick look at this. Case study learning activities, we've all seen most of them are text-based. Uh, they're, they're heavily analysis-focused. Uh, and the learner is kind of a voivorer. They're on the outside looking in at a description of a past event. Uh, scenarios, on the other hand, you've probably seen these, are used in the medical profession a lot. And here's just an example of one here. You are a critical care nurse about to receive Mr. Stewart, a 24-year-old patient, and so on. And it gives you the very, very concise, it's a single situation. It's a single problem focus. The difference here is that it's happening in real time. You're supposed to feel that you're kind of, this is a problem you are attacking in the present, and you are actually involved in this. You are, you are tackling it, and you are an active agent. Now, simulation-based activities, on the other hand, which I referred to earlier, are much more complex. Uh, they're representing very complex real-world situations with lots of decisions. Here's an example of a manager's workshop interacting with about five or six different employees. You're working on motivating them. You have access to the uh, uh, to the to their uh, history and uh, a lot of other information and a lot of in-depth interactions uh, are possible here. And there's also a lot of discovery and exploration uh, involved in uh, uh, simulations. Now, interactive case scenarios, uh, on the other hand, you can look at this as kind of an amalgam or a mashup of different forms. You have elements of simulation, you've got some gamification, you have case study, role play, scenarios, stories, uh, interactive multimedia. And in this way, it is a digital hybrid is what we refer to it. And we often, you know, developers, and I would often refer to this as, as a kind of a, a case study on digital steroids. We're really going to pump up that, that case study genre and add a, a lot of new elements to it of interactivity. So if we were to define it, we look at, if you take case studies, you take scenarios and you take simulations and you put them all together, you get interactive case scenarios. And the big tagline for the design of these is here's the situation and you're in it. There's an example to the left here and it begins with here's the situation. So in almost all the designs of interactive case scenarios, we usually start off with here you are, you're in this situation, and this is what you have to do, go, go into it. And you see it in this example right here, you know, you're a volunteer, you've accepted an opportunity to work as an intern, so it's, you are in a situation, and you are, you are the agent. And there's a variety of different uh, ways that you can do this. In this example here, you're going to interview uh, a group of nurse candidates for a job position. So here again, it is a, it is a, you are in a situation and you have to act. So 
when we define interactive case scenarios in a, in a very concise way, it involves course content situated or placed in a context. Involved in that context is a challenge or a series of challenges. There's characters, people, you're interacting with agents, people, virtual characters. You make choices, those choices can have consequences. And most importantly, all of this is connected with a course goal, a learning objective, content, and hopefully bridges over into real world experiences. In the article, I didn't get into it deeply, but we refer to, or I refer to the seven C's of interactive case scenario design. But I didn't show you what those are. So I'm gonna right now just quickly move through a few examples so you can see that the structure of an interactive case scenario almost always involves several of these C's, probably at least three or four of them, but a really good robust scenario will involve all seven of them. So here's an example here. Here's an example of one scenario where you're a new intern, you've just been hired uh, for a city in Wisconsin, and you're gonna work with a doctor, uh, she's a science advisor, and she has an assignment for you. And so she gives you an assignment and she sends you an email and she attaches some graphics uh, that she wants you to review. And when you finish reviewing them, you're to meet with Dr. Bishop to go over your observations with him first before you meet with her. So you have a discussion with Dr. Bishop. In your discussion with Dr. Bishop, though, he asks you some questions, which I'm not showing all of it now. I mean, he gives you some feedback. You actually, uh, the, 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 the user of this actually made some wrong uh, analyses and he's making corrections. Uh, for the user of, of what they should have, have uh, come up with. So when you look at this, how many C's did you see here? Well, in a way, we have content uh, that's being provided by Dr. Bishop based on your responses to his questions, which are really, it's really feedback based on choices that you've made. We obviously have a context and we have some big challenges. This is an interesting scenario where you have to help advise on, on uh, city planning for resources due to global warming. And so we have the characters, we have choices, we have, we have pretty much all the C's going on in this example here. I'm not, you're not seeing all of them in details, but they're almost all there. Here's one uh, that's used we use, we've done a lot of scenarios for the healthcare profession. Here's one where you're a new doctor and you're going to be interacting in the scenario with your mentor, with a colleague, and with a patient. And as you go into your, your daily routine, you are encountering a patient who is, uh, you're asking them some questions and she's responding to you. Obviously here, she thinks you're you didn't choose the right response here, so she's giving you some feedback. Uh, you're confronted with radiology images and you're talking to your colleague Tina and you're analyzing them and she actually gives you some feedback too on your analysis of these images. And we have the boss, who's a really hardcore boss, Dr. Patterson, she's watching you uh, and she gives you feedback and asks you some questions and she tells you that you, you didn't actually make a good uh, interpretation of the images and she's giving you some feedback. At the end of the day, she has an infamous performance review and she's giving you some feedback of how actually poorly you did in making some of your decisions that day. And you see almost all the C's here with perhaps the exception of connection. And that's what the, uh, we'll get to that later, but that's what happens after this scenario in the class uh, or in the course. And let's look at uh, one more here. Uh, here is a, another scenario where you are going to, you're a student, an exchange student, and you're going to be going to Mexico and you are going to have a mission there by uh, visiting some farms and talking to farmers. So your goal, you have a very specific goal here, is that uh, you're visiting, you're gonna be talking to a dairy farmer, and you have to 
understand and make a recommendation whether you should purchase a certain type of mechanical machine. And so in this scenario, we go off to the farm. And by the way, the instructor for this course actually goes down to Mexico a lot. So he takes pictures when he goes down there. And it was fairly easy for him to just throw together this little kind of real world scenario. Uh, of what it's like to be down in Mexico and you're helping uh, to advise farmers on making decisions. So you're on the farm and you are asking the farmer questions. Here's a list of questions here. He responds to you. Uh, and then at a certain point, yeah, the instructor would like students to make reflection on what they've observed on that farm and what they've learned and to keep track of it. So here again, if we look at what C's did you see, I think we see the, the, the contents there, the context for sure, the challenge that you have, you have the characters are all involved, you have choices. There's some consequences and in this case, so they'll come a little bit later and then connections from the course material to real world are, are certainly being made here. Okay, and just one more quick one. Here's another one uh, where you're going to work internationally in Ethiopia, and you're going to investigate a real world complex issues related to arable land and make some recommendations. So you have an advisor in this scenario. She tells you in three days, you're going to make a recommendation to the minister, and the instructor actually is playing the role of the minister in this scenario here. Uh, and emails and documents are sent to her. So you are to have a basic knowledge of the culture of Ethiopia first before you do some of this. And so you can spend some time learning a little bit about Ethiopia. You can interview uh, people. It's very simple. You have some questions and you have a, uh, a prince who's going to answer some of the questions for you. And lastly, and most important, it's time to write a draft recommendation to discuss to the, at a staff meeting on Monday, and that would be at a class session on Monday, a face-to-face -face session. They're all going to play the role uh, of this, uh, of this uh, 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 intern or student and, and propose their recommendations. So again, almost all the C's are in this one here, uh, and including the linkage to the classroom and consequences pretty much come later in the quality of your recommendation, which will uh, be reviewed in the class. So let's just pause for a moment and we'll, we'll take a look at, uh, I think by now you understand what interactive case scenarios are like. I hope I've given you a, a sense of feel and you can see some of the capabilities of what's going on. So we're gonna pause a moment and what are some of the pedagogical attributes of these interactive case scenarios that you feel might be useful for you? Uh, and the seven C's framework, uh, how that could be adapted to different uh, types of scenarios and learning activities. So Simone, let me turn it over to you to see if we have any questions or you do, and we'll, we'll take a little time here and, and do a discussion of five minutes. So um, have any of you used um, interactive case scenarios before? Um, if you have, do you, how have you used it? You may post it in the chat area, or if somebody wants to use the audio, we'll be fine too. So have, yeah, have you used it in class or to design your courses? And the, the other big thing too is making an effort to contextualize in some way the, the content and subject matter of your course. I think this is one approach to doing it and perhaps People maybe have had some other approaches mm -hmm. uh, they've used to contextualize. Yeah, or maybe you didn't call that interactive case scenarios, or you called something else. So let's see, we may have a few people typing in. Um, so Les, what is the most difficult part of the 7Cs process? Well, what we found, you know, working with a, a variety of instructors is spending time work uh, identifying a good narrative, a good story. It, and it involves looking at your, your course content, your learning objectives, and identifying a, a, an objective that's a value that you really want to connect 
have the students be able to connect that and relate it to the real world. And creating a, a narrative, a story, basically. A lot of this is finding a good story and then building up that story to incorporate, integrate course content material, decisions uh, that relate to some of, the, some of the material in your classroom where you're applying it and you're gonna make decisions and apply it. So I think the storification of a case is some of the hardest, hardest things to do. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit later on some techniques on how to, how, how to do that if one wishes to. So we have someone posting, I think it's Roxanne, correct? Posting um, that she has used that in, in a small healthy school. And, and she tried to teach uh, summaries, but having, I mean, to the students, but having them summarize and make notes as they watch video scenarios. That's one approach. Um, and mm -hmm. she thinks mm -hmm. that the, the class felt that was more relatable to mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. they were doing. You know, that's good. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about typos. <laughs> so there's an effort there. There's an effort there to contextualize the content mm -hmm. material related to videos that I presume are, are dealing with real world situations. Okay. Yeah. And good. John also posted that he has informally done um, this with some of the seeds starting um, with a story by a discussion forums in an mm -hmm. online class, but not as thorough and sophisticated you know, as we have here. <laughs> uh, and I see Valerie also has used cases in her class for adult and community education, as well as educational leadership. Uh, the students reacted to, they would react to the solutions for each of the analysis. So did you use that um, online, Valerie, and um, um, totally online, or you had a component of face-to-face? And John, too, was yours all online? You, you said that you have discussion forum. Oh, you said it was in an online class. Um, yes. Sorry, I miss noting that. Um, so, but once you create it, you can reuse it. It's like a learning object that you can reuse in future classes. It might take a little bit more time initially to think this way, but once you have it set up, it makes it easier. Mm -hmm. And these, these scenarios can be of varying complexity and lengths. Uh, for instance, maybe some of the work that uh, some of the participants have described right now, maybe some of those could be packaged and beefed up into a very short scenario, explaining, again, the seven C's, you have a, you have a context, you have a challenge and then you're asking learners to how would you respond to this situation and perhaps giving them some options giving them some resources and then they have to generate some sort of decision or plan or you know, answer some questions so these elements can be made much more simple you know yeah, yeah. Okay, should we go to segment two? We'll sure, have sure. Second later. Yeah, sure. And uh, um, hopefully, you know, a lot of this is I'm showing a variety of examples, but the intent here is to, you know, stimulate some creative thinking of say, hey, I could do something like that. Maybe not as you know, extensive as that, but I can, you know, incorporate some of these characters and uh, contexts and challenges uh, into the. Uh, in, into a learning activity. So right. now, when and how to use this interactive case scenarios effectively? How do you do that in online and blended learning? Like? Yeah, yeah, that's the that's the question we're going to address right now in this in this second part here. Um, let's take a look at you know case scenarios in a blended learning context. And in a way, what we're what we're trying to simulate or come close to are experiential learning activities. Uh, and just as a side note, uh, on the, on the uh, medical one, uh, where you are a doctor and you're interacting with uh, you know, Dr. Patterson, a colleague and radiologists and patients, we've actually sat down with uh, physicians and as we were testing it and having them move through it. And, and as we're watching them move through, a lot of them would comment like, 
I'm getting tense here. I'm getting, you know, as they're going through this scenario, they're, I'm getting a little tense here on some of these decisions. I'm not so sure if I, you know, did, uh, ordered the right labs or whatever. So in a way, by going through the scenario, they are having an experience that involves some emotions, just not cognition, processing information. <laughs> it involves an emotional dimension here, which Simone and I are, are uh, you know, looking into more on learning experience design on how to incorporate more of that. But it is a ex- type of experiential learning. And traditionally, what, we've, what you find in traditional blended learning is that the out of class learning uh, materials uh, really used to work more at the lower level blooms, that you would do readings, that you would obtain knowledge, be able to understand and describe things, and then application might occur like in the classroom uh, or some uh, assignment that's given. But what you find though with the technology affordances that are offered and what we're doing with interactive case scenarios what you do out of the classroom could actually involve a number of higher level bloom uh, learning objectives. Not only can students absorb new content, but they can begin to apply it in the scenario. They can actually practice and they can do a self-assessment even before they come to class or in an online course before they get together in a discussion forum. They can actually do higher level learning activities outside of class with a a case scenario um, and and have it be a very active learning experience too. So just keep in mind that- I have a question here. Sure, sure. Can I ask, is is this a flipped classroom model then? You can use it in a flipped classroom model. Now, if I were using interactive case scenarios in a pure online course, I would, I would set this up as a learning activity that students go through, and I would then integrate it with perhaps some readings, uh, some uh, class discussions, uh, other activities. So if I were doing it in an online uh, uh, format, I would then be having students go through the scenario, but then through discussions and other activities, I'd have them reflect on their experience, maybe elaborate on their experience with as the right-hand column here, synthesize, connect, and create. I could do that in an online environment. I could also more easily probably do a lot of this in a classroom environment. So I think the, the, the uh, strategy we're, we're talking about here can be used, integrated uh, quite nicely in both blended and online uh, formats. I think blended would be great because students have the experiences and then in class you can do some higher level activities collaborating and sharing your experiences in the scenario. Okay. Um, so the other thing we need to keep in mind, the effectiveness of, of interactive case scenarios and learner characteristics. So This methodology uh, strategy tends to work better when learners have some prior knowledge of the content material and they have some experience too. Throwing learners into a scenario where they have very little background or prior knowledge is tough because in the scenario, then you have to bring them up to speed, provide resources for them to have that prerequisite knowledge in order to make some decisions and choices that are informed. So if you're looking at the continuum of learner prior knowledge and experience, we're not looking at totally newbies to a topic area or content area. They need to actually be primed uh, a bit for this through personal experiences or just prior study. Uh, We found too that interactive case scenarios, if used in the right context and designed in the right way, definitely motivate learners. And I'll show just a couple more examples later, but oftentimes learners are acquiring content, absorbing new content at the time of need in the scenario, which is highly motivating. It's highly motivating to acquire and to learn new information when you need it. And the scenario actually can establish that need 
in a visceral way in order to make a decision, I need to know this information here. And there, there are other characteristics, and we can just discuss this too, if you can think of your students and how this might go over with them and what types of students, uh, characteristics of students, you think this uh, strategy would work best on. We'll discuss this in our, in our little follow-up here. But yes, we need to keep in mind learning characteristics as we design these scenarios and select learning objectives that we're going to try to uh, scenarioize, I guess you could say. So that's something to consider. Uh, types of learning activities and case scenarios. Now Horton, William Horton, has a very simple but elegant model of learning activities can be absorb type uh, activities, do or apply or connect. And which one of these types of learning and learning activities do scenarios work best on? So if you look at absorb type activities, this really involves lower level blooms, uh, knowledge acquisition, uh, conceptual understanding, just familiarity with material. You generally don't want to develop or spend the time developing scenarios where students are going to acquire new knowledge or conceptual understanding. That, that is a little bit uh, overkill for a scenario on that. Where you do see a sweet spot though is that whenever you want students to begin applying knowledge and skills through actions, behaviors, simulated actions and behaviors, and some decision making. So you want to look for those types, that types, those types of learning uh, design, learning goals that are more application oriented. And another sweet spot is, is solving complex problems, uh, wicked problems, tough problems, where learners have to synthesize, evaluate, and oftentimes generate or create uh, a solution, maybe where there's no right answer. So those are, those are the, the places or the types of learning activities you might want to consider uh, uh, interactive case scenarios to uh, be part of. Uh, and let me just explain this. Let me just show you examples here. Now, if we look at levels of learning and, and the Bloom's taxonomy that I just went over, I mentioned earlier that, you know, conceptual understanding isn't necessarily, knowledge and conceptual understanding isn't necessarily the best, best objective for uh, uh, interactive case scenarios. But that said, <laughs> you can in the course of a scenario. Here's an example here of ethnomedicine in Latino communities in Madison. It says right here, before you begin actually making some harder decisions and recommendations, you need to get some background information and review the topics below. So you're given a goal, you're given a challenge, and you're saying, but before you dive into that, Here's some things you need to know. So in this scenario here, you can click on links and get some background information that you need to know. Here's some medicinal plants in Madison, but you could also get a little background in life in Ecuador because you're going to be working with Ecuadorians. And so you can get some background information, usually very concise and to the point. So you're learning at the time of need or just before you need it, which is highly motivated. But again, here, learners are acquiring new, uh, new knowledge, some new understanding in the service of doing something uh, a little higher level. Applying is something where I think scenario for the interactive training program, a part of it where students um, or, or learning how to do credit card interactions for ticket sales, sporting ticket sales. And so here we have actually scenarios that are just pretty simple, very descriptive of what a ticket sales agent does. And you read a description and you are, in this particular case, you're saying, did she follow procedure? Is she following rules or not? And in this particular case, she violates a rule right here. And on the screen prior to this, the, uh, the learner, uh, made the choice that this person performed the task incorrectly. She violated some security rules and she gets feedback. 
She gets feedback on it. Yes, good call. You identified what the problem was. So the learner in this particular case is applying some rules, some principles to a situation and being able to uh, identify where that rule is followed, where it's broken, and apply it, apply that rule to a real world context. Case scenarios are really good for analysis or putting analysis in context. Here you have a scenario here where you have your mentor uh, and she's telling you that you need to do some analysis here and now analyze some data. And uh, so what she does is she gives you some data and then you're asked some questions about that data. You have to analyze it. And the question is, what do you notice about these locations and the outbreaks? Select all that are true. So you're analyzing data and you're being checked uh, on, on the quality of your analysis and you get corrective feedback on that. Moving up the scale to more complex learning. Uh, here's an example of a, of a scenario here where you are a speech language pathologist in a voice clinic and you're going to do some voice evaluations with patients. With a particular patient in this case. And, but before you do that, you have to look at a, 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 lecture, a short lecture on audio perceptual analysis, prepare yourself for it. You have to read the instructions and the regulations and rules. You want to print out a copy because as you go through the on-screen uh, 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 procedure, you're going to be filling it out. So here you're going to actually be simulating the analysis of a, of a, a patient with a vocal pathology. And it's very simple. I mean, it, you just go to screens with a picture of a patient and you're hearing various recordings of pathologies, voice pathologies, and you're selecting from it and you're evaluating it. So it's not so complicated, but you are evaluating or you're at that higher level. And then you're creating here, we saw this earlier, that you're going to create a proposal, a recommendation proposal. So we're moving up that level of higher level learning and scenarios are really good for that. Setting the stage for actually developing a solution to a problem or generating a document or creating some sort of learning artifact. And now there's other things that other things that these scenarios do other than you know, just focusing on that the uh, learning hierarchy. They enable you to reflect. As you're going through a scenario, you're reflecting on that experience. And here the instructor is linking it to a Google Doc where he can look at their reflections. So this is a course Google Doc and he just made out a form in Google Doc. Students fill it in and he gets an insight as to what they're doing and where they are in that, uh, in that, uh, in that process. And exploration. Scenarios can be designed. These are a little harder. I showed part of it earlier, but here's a branching scenario where you can actually make different choices. You're a reporter in this particular case, and you're actually looking at ethics and choices of how reporters uh, handle uh, touchy, confidential situations and, and be accurate. So here you're a reporter simulating. You, you get a text message, uh, and then, then you're talking to your boss, the bureau chief, and what do you do now? Now, you, you can pick any one of these. Now, you want to question the waiter, for instance, right here. It actually takes you down a different path and you have a different outcome. You can actually make some pretty bad decisions and have an outcome that's not so good. So again, you are, you are presented with the, you can explore. You can go through this multiple times and students have done that. Just, just, let me move want to see what happens and students will play it a couple times just to see what the effects are of making a, making a choice. And again, you can interview bartenders, you can interview people in this and explore. And case uh, scenarios can also have a assessment. You can build assessments and it's fairly easy to do. There's a video uh, and you can have some, some questions that you do a self-assessment as to what you learn. This is an embedded YouTube video. And there's a whole lot of other ways that you can use scenarios to do, to do different types of, of learning and learning activities. And here's an example of some other one here that you're going to interview. You're going to interview some, whoops, you're going to interview some candidates, some nurse candidates for a position. 
And this is interesting because there's a lot of collaboration. Students go through this and they, can, they, they get together outside the scenario to discuss who is the best candidate for this particular uh, uh, position uh, in the medical field, a, a nurse, uh, a specialist, and so on. So let's just pause here a moment and look at when and how can interactive case scenarios uh, this, this approach be used most effectively. Let's look at your courses here. Let's, let's throw it back to you. There's a lot of possibilities here, a lot of flexibility. So let's hear what people have to say. So we have um, a posting from um, Valerie Bryan uh, that she has given out uh, different cases to different groups online for them to solve and then they have to share later with the rest of the class. But those are great examples, Les. Um, anybody has done something like that? Those examples bring different contexts. So I'm looking forward to hearing other contexts if somebody has done it. You may say something in, in the audio, via audio, or you may post in the chat area. You should be able to see the chat icon at the bottom of the screen. Yeah, and I should maybe just uh, qualify this a little bit. We can also say how can elements of some of these interactive case scenarios be incorporated into learning activities that you do for your blended and online courses. Keep it in mind that what we're doing here, the underlying strategy, is that contextualizing, that connecting course content and objectives with a real world experience. So John has um, written something here saying that this would be a good technique for rehearsals for out of class real life experiences, such as mm -hmm. internships. And we yes. have Caitlin. Uh, she says that a faculty member that she works with as students create their own cases, workshop them with their class classmates, and then she uses them year over year with her students. That removes some of the burden of creating all of these cases herself, the instructor, which is time consuming. That's true, Caitlin. Can well, be time consuming, but then you can reuse them. That's really interesting there, what Caitlin just mentioned, because uh, let's play on that a little bit here, because uh, what we've done, and we've actually, uh, when I was at UW working on this, on this project, actually had students develop case scenarios. In particular, one that stands out to me were, was senior nursing students. So what the instructor did was that she created a case scenario using seven C's for the class. The so students got to see one, and they got to experience it and go through it. Then subsequent to that, she says, I'd like all of you to get in teams and teams of three and select a real world challenging experience that you have had working on a nursing unit in the last year. And I'd like for you to create a case scenario in this particular instance, just using PowerPoint slides to go through it a case scenario of that situation, again, bringing in as many of those C's as possible. You know, who are, the, who are the characters? What was the challenge? What sort of decisions did you confront? You know, and, and she even gave students, which we do in creating this, she gave students the license of, well, you can, you can inflate a couple points here to make it a more of an interesting narrative, but we're gonna share it with other people too. But the point is, let's bring to life you know, some of those uh, challenges and experiences, the emotions that uh, are happening in the real world that tie into your classwork. So that's a really good high level. That's a creation. That's moving up on that Bloom's taxonomy to creation, having students create interactive scenarios. So Valerie has uh, another example here about having students interviewing people in the field in jobs that they may wish to have in the future after mm -hmm. they have written this up and shared with the class with anonymity they must identify what works what work skills in the person interview demonstrated 
And if, it, if, if they have that position open, they might even want to join the team. That's a great example. I agree with you, Caitlin. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, there's so much you can do with that. I mean, you could even ask some of these professionals working in the field, you could ask them questions saying, what are some of the more challenging situations you encounter here with this job that you have? Describe for me a, you know, an example of, of, of what it is. That way you dig deeper into you know, the dimensions of that job, the types of decisions you have to make, and can even create like a very short scenario, problem scenario. You know, mm -hmm. There's a common situation that surfaces with this job. You know, yeah. Describe it, yeah. That's great, great examples. Let's go to segment three. Okay, all right. Moving on, here's, here's the situation. <laughs> you are an instructor or designer, and how do you go about creating and integrating interactive case scenarios into your course? I'm kind of a little playing it up here, but most interactive case scenarios do begin. Here's the situation. So how do you do this? How do you begin and how do you start integrating it into your course? Well, first of all, you have two main challenges in creating these. One is a you know, instructional design or a learning design. How do you get a quality? How do you get a quality scenario produced? And the development tools, you know, how do you, how do you actually create these things and be able to you know, post them digitally uh, you know, on the web? And I'm not gonna get heavily into development tools and design. That's another topic of another workshop but going to be looking mainly at instructional design and how you move forward into development. Uh, again, we're applying the seven C's methodology here, and let's just dive a little deeper into how you as a learning designer or an instructor, if you're creating these, how you're going to use, how are you going to focus on each one of these C's? Now, obviously, and typically, most instructors start with content. <laughs> you know, what's my course content? And what you want to look for are the course content that relates more to critical concepts, difficult concepts, or processes that are complicated, or principles that really need to transfer to the real world. Facts, information, procedures maybe aren't as important, but you want to look for that, those types of you know, rich content areas to invest your time in. And so, again, you can look at the subject matter of your course, but in my opinion, more, more important are the experiences that you've had in the real world working in your profession and bringing those into, this, bringing those into the content of the course via the scenarios, connecting it with the subject matter. So the content oftentimes for a case scenario can come from your personal experience working in the field or even your experiences talking to colleagues who have had challenges, uh, relevant challenges, common challenges working in their profession. So the content's coming from a blend of the subject matter of the course and you, your experiences as a professional working in the field. That's the content part of it. Context, uh, you always want to have a, a context that is authentic. You know, it, there's a time and a place. And contexts, real world contexts are, are, are slippery. They're tricky. There's a whole lot of variables going on that are not covered in the classroom. Interactive case scenarios are a good way to introduce students through the scenarios to the complexities of real world, working in a real world context, all the nuances the, uh, you know, that happen in the environment, uh, rules and customs that are involved working in a particular setting. So you really wanna make your context as, as uh, authentic as possible. And again, here, here's the example I showed earlier. Here's a situation, you're working in a voice clinic. That's the context here. You know, you're going to be conducting, you know, interview analyses. You're going to be uh, doing evaluations of patients. So you, and when you set this up, you want to have it as, you want to have, throw in little interesting things that just don't work as clean as they are often presented in a classroom uh, or in a, in a textbook. So you want to bring that authentic real world uh, environment into it. 
Now, challenges. This is what I challenge. The challenge in an interactive case scenario is the learning objective in disguise. There's something about starting off a learning activity that begins with, in this learning activity, you will define or you will describe three techniques for doing blah, 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 blah. Well, in an interactive case scenario, you're throwing them in, you're translating that objective into a more engaging, sounding, challenging scenario that they can say, oh, wow, okay, huh. That's not abstract. That's contextualized in the real world. So you want to set up where you're compelled to action. You know, there's a, you're compelled to want to do this. So the challenge, again, is a way to reframe the task, the goal, the objective, and oftentimes starting with a conflict or a problem. The challenge is solving a problem. Here's a situation, and we got a big problem here. You know, here's the problem. We need to come to some sort of approach or strategy or resolution to solve it. Let's dive into it now, all right? And so the challenge is that objective. And particularly, you know, the example was that, that the farm, you know, here's your goal. You got to understand, you got to help make a decision on purchasing a mechanical milking machine. You have to acquire information and talk to people in order to do that. Characters, now you'll notice every one of these case scenarios have characters involved, people, most real world, challenges and experiences somehow involve people you know <laughs> i mean let's face it, unless you're working in a factory and you're just working on a machine all day most of the work we do involves people and when you're designing learning scenarios one of the hardest challenges that i've found or is what's the learner identity who are you are you in it and sometimes we design scenarios where you're a third person where you're observing someone else perform a task and you're going to observe them, you're going to help them, you're going to make recommendations for them, and so on. So you can sometimes take a scenario and say you are evaluating the work of someone, observe what he or she does, make recommendations, or evaluate what they do. And every character in a scenario has to have a function. They're going to present the problem. They are going to provide feedback. They're going to provide mentoring. So the characters in these scenarios, and there are a rich assortment of characters here. Here we have Juan on the farm. Here we have a patient here, and we're actually, we're actually critiquing this nurse here, you know, helping this nurse make some decisions with this patient who's, who's uh, very challenging. And here on the breaking news scenario, we have your boss who's pressuring you to get this story out which happens in the real world, right? So characters are an important part of, uh, of, of scenarios, uh, bringing people into it, all right? So the other one is choices. These are decision points. These are options when you encounter a check. There are multiple choices that you have to make. And oftentimes these are disguised assessments how the student responds to, the, to this situation, what choices they make, the instructor can observe that or get feedback from, they see how the student is, is, uh, is, is behaving or make, how, how they're acting in it. Again, and here are these little uh, questions here. This is a Uganda malnutrition scenario. Okay, people come to you uh, with the different problems and what are you going to do? You're going to give them food, you're going to give them money. You know, these are questions that you encounter in real life situations. These are big decision points. And before you go to Uganda, you need to be prepared for this because it's going to happen to you. You're going to have to make these decisions. So choices, consequences are feedback. You know, that's uh, responses to the choices that you make. And they need to be kind of framed in a real life. It's not like a, a multiple choice test, correct, incorrect. You need to get some feedback as to what was the consequence of that choice you made, or what would the consequence be in a real world situation. So um, those are, those are uh, 
very common things that you can build into these uh, uh, scenarios. Here's an example here of you're making some decisions on a human relations, about human relations, and here's an HR representative, and she gives expert feedback. You make a choice, and she says this is true, and she explains why that's a good choice. And here we have our infamous Dr. Patterson earlier. She's giving you feedback and making corrections on, on, on your choices. And connections. In my opinion, this is probably one of the most important parts of case scenario design is making the connections between the scenario, the course material, integrating it into course material, uh, connecting it to real world, and looking at transfer. How is this experience going to transfer to real world, to real world contexts? And here's this Uganda scenario again. What would you do now? And we're going to be, be talking about this in the class or in the discussion forum. So again, something like this could just be a very short scenario. Here's a situation. You are meeting with a group of uh, Ugandans in a community hall, and this issue comes up. What are you going to do? And then you can it's a very short uh, uh, lead into a scenario, but then you can follow that up in class. So it's a very good way to stimulate discussion. On designing scenarios, uh, we have worksheets. We have a worksheet. If anyone ever want this, I can send it to you. A design process. And simply here, you fill out what's the scenario. Uh, what's the purpose of the scenario? Absorb, do, or connect type activity. What's the learning outcome of that scenario? And how are you going to integrate it into your course? So there's, there's a method here. There's a strategy here to the designing of these. And here's where I'm going to leave you off here. Just start your scenarios, sketches on paper, and you can prototype in PowerPoint what that scenario looks like. Yeah, I was going to ask you about the technology. Caitlin also shared a link in the chat area about a free digital tool from Google for creating stories or adventures. Um, cool. I haven't used that, but I'll check it out. But um, yeah, you can use PowerPoint as Les talked about. Yeah. yeah, other tools like you have Captivate, depending on what your learning technology uh, uh, staff at your institution have available for you. Many of them have contracts with Adobe. You Captivate is a very high-end tool. You can do all sorts of branching scenarios. They have templates in there, storyline. Uh, we created a tool at UW-Madison. I don't believe it's available anymore to create these things, but uh, again, there, there are a variety of tools out there that you can do this. But You can start in PowerPoint. Yeah. So thank you so much for all you are sharing in the chat area. Do we have any, any questions for Les? We are winding down our session, one hour session. Um, some people do role play in psychology class. Some people use the um, half activity. I've heard of that. So you're sharing great strategies that other people um, um, can use too. Um, you can, I mean, you can insert the case scenarios right after they complete a specific reading to put theory to practice. That would be a great example. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Any questions for Les? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, John is interested in learning more about tools and techniques to develop them. Uh, here is a, is a great um, um, additional resources. Um, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and I can send John or anyone else, I can send them these, these worksheets and some task aids as to, uh, you know, what this has, I, these documents have some tips on it. Here's a little worksheet on getting started with it. Um, and great readings. If you want to get, dive in deeper, the Educause ELI written by myself and Leon. The seven C's goes into more the depth of some of what I've covered today. But Ruth Clark's book, Scenario Based E Learning, is really good. Evidence based guidelines for it. There's a lot of evidence and research supporting the design of these experiences. 
And uh, um, John said another workshop, maybe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll workshop. Talk about yeah. that with Triple AC. I'm gonna yeah. take this opportunity to thank Terry for helping us put this together with the technology, and Alan Knox, who has been coordinating all these web forums with Triple ACE. I think Alan might be on the phone. I'm not sure if he's here. Um, but um, thank you all for attending. Go ahead. Thank you very much. I yes. will have been following you on my iPhone. <laughs> thank you, Alan. You, you, you have been a great promoter of the web forums. We really appreciate it. Well, my pleasure. So I think we are going to end now because it's 2 o'clock and it's the end of our session. Thank you all for attending. Email works with questions and we'll share the uh, resources that Les addressed at the end, the worksheets and task aids. Thank you so much. And I appreciate the excellent session by Les. It was very informative. Oh, thank you, Alan. Good to hear from you. <laughs>